morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? I uh, just uh, looking at the sun peeking through on the right hand side there, very nice. It's been absolutely pouring down. The days are getting longer and we're running out of time to do the uh, pruning of the fruit trees and everything that we normally do this time of year, and especially planting trees. The trouble is, as soon as the gets, you know, the weather sort of warms up a bit, and you feel like planting a few trees, you can't get them anymore because they won't lift them out and send them. They they have to be lifted while they're not fast asleep in the winter. So even now, January, it's it's a little bit late. February is the absolute latest I think that they'll ship any trees. So if you want to plant them, you have to plant them, and then you have to burn off all the uh, grass around them with glyphosate before you plant them, and so and that takes a month. So. You know, it's, it's you pretty well had it now. Anyway, I'm uh, we're in the second half of January, which is uh, if you've been listening to these podcasts, you know is the busy half. Thanks to uh, thanks to human error. Actually, there's another dentist up the road who's also forgotten to pay his ARF. But uh, unlike me, and I tell you what, uh, the one thing I have to be thankful to the Care Quality Commission for is inspecting me earlier this year because I had to make sure my CPD was in order for the CQC inspection which meant that it was in order for the GDC and um, the this other dentist as I don't think he has the CPD necessary to apply for restoration and so as a result um, He's got into a big argument with them about whether or not he sent them the CPD and they lost it and etc etc or perhaps he, he's just saying that they've lost it to cover up for the fact that he wasn't up to date and as I'm sure many dentists aren't up to date I'm sure that you know many the, the, this was always the problem with the GDC wasn't it, it was they brought in compulsory GD, uh, CPD because uh, dentists weren't doing any training and then they said you have to do a certain number of hours in a certain time and then of course what did dentists do they did nothing they still did nothing until just before the deadline and then they did it like a went on a weekend course and did it all um, and so now they're trying to sort of spread it out a bit and say no you have to prove to us that you've done a bit you know a bit every week <laughs> So, what can I say? He's saying that he's sent it to the GDC and they should have it and they say that they haven't received it or something. I don't know. I'm only getting this second hand, but it's a problem, isn't it? Because you've got 75 hours compulsory CPD to do and then if you haven't got most of that, then that's literally two weeks. That's assuming you can find somewhere to do it. I mean, you can do CPD online now, of course, so it's not so bad. In the old days, you used to have to thumb through the British Bloody Dental Journal and find out which branch or which section was doing a meeting, and then go all over the place. If you needed to get to get some CPD quick, you'd be like, on Monday you'd be in Leicester, and on Tuesday you'd be in Nottingham, and Wednesday you'd be in Bath. <laughs> but not anymore, it can all be done online, so it's not so bad now. But finding out that your papers aren't in order is, is worse than getting struck off. He's <laughs> finding out you can't get struck on again. So we're coming up to the uh, the second half of the month which is and obviously we're very busy because all these patients who've been uh, cancelled courtesy of the General Dental Council have, um, have now got to come in in the second half so which is all right you know We've got the capacity to see them, it's not a massive problem. What what I've got to do is think of the cash flow because uh, I think the 31st is, where are we today, is the 23rd, although I probably won't release it this today. Well, I might do, yeah, I might do. 23rd and then the 31st is next Wednesday, but then you've got like a two day delay when you pay money in. Because although you, I can transfer money to like uh, someone I know for instantly, if they if they bank at HSBC or within two hours if they bank somewhere else, 
um, money I pay into my business, the business service is crap. Two, you're lucky if you see your money within two days. And uh, three days if you're merchant services, which is double crap. So um, really, any money that I want to have available for next Wednesday to pay the wages is going to have to be paid in by Friday 5 p.m. latest. So it's a you know, and what's today? Today's Tuesday, so I've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We've got four days really to four days to save the world. But we will, and we do. And we have in the past, and we will again. So, <laughs> we'll need to, probably next month. That's that's the part of being a small business person, isn't it? That's the whole part. Just holding the world together for one more month, for the sake of your children, your wife and the staff. So, what's new? I've been thinking about the uh, the model, the dental surgery model, and I'm thinking because I've seen, you know, I mean, it's changed tremendously, obviously, since I qualified. When I qualified, uh, we had a system where, you know, dentists were paid per filling, and so uh, the emphasis was on piecework and doing, you know, dealing with the backlog of dental decay. And so anything that needed to get filled was filled. And we were all incredibly busy. And uh, there were half a third of the number of dentists on the register that there are now. And everybody could find an NHS dentist. There was no problem. You could just went to the nearest dentist and they would take you on the NHS. And NHS dentists made a good living. We, we were very happy with how much we were earning. And there was no uh, shortage, you know, of services. Um, but what that meant was that, you know, we were seeing like 20, 30, 40 patients a day. You needed a receptionist who had a big old reception book, there's no computerization. And if you wanted to know when Mrs. So-and-so was coming in, then um, she would know because she'd pretty well memorized the book. Uh, otherwise, you had to flick through page by page to try and, you know, and, look and try and read all the scrawl try and find out when a patient was coming in if they rang up and said I've forgotten when is my appointment it was a real nuisance and it was also when the files were on paper that was a nuisance because if someone's file was misfiled you know and it's very easy to misfile the MOOCs the, and the MACs and the the STs and the SINTs then um, where, how do you go about finding it you know <laughs> if you go to the paper records and the record is not there where it's supposed to be and you know that's where it's supposed to be then where is it you know it's at some other random position isn't it it may be close I mean like if you've got um, you know Mr Stroud and he's not in between Mrs Stroud and Miss Stroud then you have to look in the St Clair's don't you and the St John Stevens and things like that see if he's in there but, and if he's not in there, then, you know, you have to say, has anyone taken this record out? Has anyone taken this record home? Can anyone remember where they put this record? Has anyone got this record in their briefcase? Uh, has anyone has this been sent off to the dental practice board? So, <clears throat> now, of course, with computers, you don't have any of that. Records could be in the two places at the same time. So there's no lost records. So the role of the receptionist, I think, is, is declining. And the other, um, the other reason for that is that uh, the computers do so much of what the receptionists used to do, like sending reminders, for example. I remember we used to um, uh, have, um, you know, when when somebody cancelled or crown prep didn't turn up or something, we used to um, sit down and literally fold all these reminders up and put stamps on them, and we used to send out a thousand to two thousand reminders a month. And that's all done by email now. So email is another massive difference. The, uh, the requirement to contact people by post or to send them letters now is completely gone, pretty much. I mean, you occasionally you'll get a patient in who doesn't have an email address and so you have to post something to them, uh, usually a quote or something. But um, 
nowadays you've got their email address and uh, the computer automatically sends them a reminder and not only does it send them a reminder when they make an appointment it sends them a reminder um, you know before their appointment like a week before their appointment and then the day before their appointment and they get an SMS reminder like the day before their appointment so all these jobs that perhaps used to be down to the receptionist are now all completely automated and although people do still ring the the vast majority of patients now email and this may be because I mean maybe because we're a private practice and we have a large uh, population of people I think who are sort of white collar workers who are working with computers all the time and and have smartphones um, but uh, the the number of phone calls is very low you know and it, they tend to be in the morning you know they tend to be like oh can I come in today sort of thing because they don't anticipate a, a reply straight away if they send an email so they they, they think they're going to get a more instant reply with a phone call but it's, it's the exception rather than the rule yeah and then you've got um, so what's the receptionist doing you know I mean what her role what is she doing I mean our, our receptionist tends to duplicate to a large extent what the computer's doing you know she's ringing people up and saying no did you get your reminder you know I mean she, she does make her appointments the other thing is of course she does the accounts uh, um, by which I don't mean she prepares the accounts what I mean is that like once a month she reconciles uh, our internal version our, our internal computer system that we post all the payments on with the bank account and that's just to keep it honest you know just to make sure that um, the amounts are correct and that we haven't uh, said we've paid something and then later forgotten to pay it and, and therefore it hasn't gone through the bank account so you can pick that up or the other way around you know something's gone out of the bank account which isn't in our internal system so therefore we may be less profitable or, or more profitable than we thought. So that's just a reconciliation job and that's not a massive job to be honest I mean they, you know once you get your internal system set up correctly if you if you don't uh, abuse them then they should run all these things like payments to uh, waste collectors and stuff like that that's all done um, it's a sort of the same amount more or less every month and so the, the account to our accounting system will enter all that automatically. So, you know, your your receptionist is there and every time you look at her, she's either, you know, she says, oh, no, 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 I'm busy, you know, I am busy. What, what are you going to do? Are you going to go home early? No, 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 I've got stuff to do, you know, but what, the amount of stuff is, is literally is decreasing, that's the problem. So, uh, I think the... In the, in the smaller surgery, I think the role of the receptionist is is, um, is coming under pressure. And what do you need? I mean, you need a nurse that can do reception, don't you? There are very few receptionists that can do nursing. Um, so they're vulnerable, uniquely vulnerable in that respect, in that they've gone for a uh, not a lesser skill, but a skill that's not a registrable qualification, and therefore not so scarce and uh, and they're not so flexible in the I'm not saying receptionists can't nurse I'm sure most receptionists can if called upon stick a, a gown on and and get stuck in but you know they would need to have the necessary vaccinations and everything even to be called a trainee and they would need to be called a trainee to uh, to do the job you know thanks to Pam Swain and the, the Badens, the BADNs got themselves regulated and now they're uh, they've got all these hurdles to jump now before they can work so I'm gonna have a think about that as well you know because you know if you're gonna make um, well I'm gonna that's all I'm gonna say at this moment is I'm gonna have a think about it What I need to do is just concentrate on getting through the end of January, really, at the moment. And uh, take it from there. That we've been hit by three sort of major cash flow problems. One is the uh, 
unenforced <laughs> two weeks holiday, skiing holiday. And then the uh, second one is the fact that the implantologist left and so you get a massive negative cash flow when an implantologist leaves. And then lastly you've got um, Lastly, is, is not really a major one, but it's one nevertheless, and that is that our credit scheme's catching on. We've got this scheme that where, where the patient can split the cost over 10 months free of charge, 0%. And uh, uh, for a long time, you know, it sort of hung around and nobody really took any notes of it. And now we've had a few people ask for details. And that, uh, what that can do is, can take, can muck up your cash flow a bit initially because it takes, your income into the next month you know because although they they say the decision on the credit is given within 15 minutes the actual money is not you know the application goes through and is agreed and, and the money is released and arrives two weeks later so there's no chance of us you know any you know I mean I could do like a bridge now and the patient could apply for and get credit for it and then but it, all that income now will go into February instead of January when we need it in January so so I'm going to go around and collect all the bloody credit application forms up and just hide them, hide them for a couple of weeks. <laughs> no, I'm not. All right, okay, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.